As Sylvanas is getting a new skin in this patch, the Bob Ross skin, I figured it would be time to release a guide on how to play this character. A very straightforward, simple, basic guide on playing the character, especially for those of you who haven't played him before and want to try him out now that he has this really cool skin. We'll first go over his abilities, then his build choices, and last but not least, how to play in specific situations and how to ideally use the character. Sylvanas' passive is Nature's Protection. Enemies that successfully land a melee basic attack on Sylvanas have a 25% chance of being rooted for 1 second. This may only occur once every 12 seconds. Very simple passive, clearly only countering melees as such. And that's pretty much all there is to it. This is something that helps you when you're getting chased by a melee to give you a little more time to get away from them or if you are getting, well, not only chased but also directly attacked with the goal to kill you, you may have that little bit of a bridge to get away and outside of those situations it doesn't do too much for you, but it's a nice little bonus. His first ability is a Verdant Growth. Verdant Growth is a plant that gets thrown on the ground and then starts growing after 5 seconds, which comes with a few perks. The initial throw deals damage, up to 240 and 35% scaling. If the seed actually grows into a plant, the plant will give 20 MP5 as a flat value to allies in a nearby radius. And the ability will root an enemy when it hits them for 1.25 seconds. And if an enemy destroys the growing plant or the, the pot basically, then it will reduce that enemy's protections for 5 seconds up to 25 flat protection reduction. And leveling the ability will decrease the cooldown of the ability. As such, Verdant Growth allows you to effectively lock down enemies in place. It's the primary CC of Sylvanas, I would call it, because it's the one that you will most frequently use and that is the easiest to land as well, while also allowing your team to sustain better in lanes through the MP5 and also posing a little bit of a threat to enemies by blocking a basic and reducing the protections of said enemy. Sylvanas 2 is Wisps. Wisps is basically a mix of damage over time and heal over time, plus some extra protections for allies. So when you use Wisps, the Wisps will fly out to enemies and allies around you, and the enemies take a little bit of damage. This is up to flat 13 with 10% scaling for 5 seconds every 1 second. Whereas the heal is up to 35 flat value plus 10% scaling uh, once again for 5 seconds every 1 second. In addition, the allies get up to 30 flat protection for 5 seconds as well. In case of this ability, leveling it up does not decrease the cooldown. Wisps is what arguably made Sylvanas extremely strong at its release and remains a core part of his kit to this day. The dot on the enemies is nice, it also helps revealing stealth characters, but the primary point of this is usually the healing. It just allows you to give a lot of sustain to your teammates, not only in the laning phase but also in later fights, while also giving them a protections for the fight. So there are a lot of benefits tied to this ability, which usually make it a very favorable ability to use as much as possible and level early on. Sylvanas' so third ability is Nature's Grasp. Nature's Grasp is simply a pull. Sylvanas reaches out and pulls an enemy towards him if he hits them with the pull. The pull comes with a stun and the stun lasts for one second. The range of the pull is 60, the cooldown goes down to 16 seconds from 20 by leveling and this ability can go through walls. This ability is without a doubt the one in Sylvanas' kit that takes the most practice to get used to. Pulling an enemy is not an easy task and it will maybe even gain you some appreciation from your teammates if you pull off an especially extraordinary pull. This can not only be used to engage or rather get someone towards your team, but also to pull enemies away from your allies when they're trying to escape, so use it wisely. Obviously it is a lot easier to hit if you use his one verdant growth first, if you root an enemy down first. That sets up nature's grasp a lot better because you can simply pull them from that rooted state. But the most impressive pulls are those that come from just nature's grasp or catching an enemy out of its tracks, for example, through a wall with a ward that you can bait them with or things like that. Similar to a Sobek plug, there is one important disclaimer to be made here. Figure out when it's a good idea to pull someone and when it's not. 
Hey, Gap will be very thankful if you pull him right into your team so he can use his ultimate on everyone and he basically saves his blink for later because you just gave him that for free. Whereas if you pull a squishy towards your team, it will usually mean trouble for them. Sylvanas ultimate is Wrath of Terror. Wrath of Terror is a huge circle knock-up AoE that has a radius of 35, so you can really hit a lot of enemies with this. It actually has a decent amount of damage to it as well. It has up to 100 ticking damage for 5 seconds, 1 tick per second, so up to 500 damage, plus 25% scaling per tick. So there have been wonky strats with power Sylvanas and this is basically why it kind of works. His ultimate just has a ridiculous amount of damage and scaling. The main reason why this ability is so potent as a support though is the knockup. Knockups are in most situations the strongest CC in the game and as this one allows you to knock up many targets after a very short delay, it's just very very potent. This ability is also the reason why you will often see Blink being built on Sylvanas, because blinking into the enemies with this ability up and then just using it right away to knock them up can really disrupt and engage of an enemy or set up a good ultimate combo from your team. With a 90 second cooldown it's a bit on the longer side, but that's because it's so impactful and you really have to consider in which situations you want to use this ability. Now that we've talked about all the abilities in detail, let's go over the leveling order. The first ability you want to level on level 1 is Verdant Growth. Not only is this his clearing tool aside of his AoE basic attacks, which really help with clearing as well, but you can also set these plants up at your allies' towers in order to give them more MP5 if they go back to their towers. If you do that before the game, it gives your team a bit of an advantage. Not necessarily always needed, but something that can be done. So there are multiple benefits in leveling this ability first. Your second point should go into Wisps. Wisps will allow you to sustain much better in lane and it's also a nice poke ability at the same time if the enemy comes too close to you and this lane sustain especially early on is pretty ridiculous. On the third level you can kind of choose, you can put another point into your Wisps if you really feel like you need the extra sustain but if you want to have a little more aggression, a little more setup potential and the potential to pull enemies under tower if they come too close then Nature's Grasp should be your primary choice in most situations and that's the case for most players. So at this point you will have all your three abilities and I would recommend in most situations to after that max out Wisps first. Wisps just gives you so much more lane sustain and that just is what Sylvanas is about early on and this healing is also very very strong if it comes to any early objectives, any team fights and I wouldn't really see any reason to usually not level it. It's especially important to remember that leveling it also increases the protections your allies gain and this is something that can be very beneficial mid-engage. If you're looking to play really really aggressive and you're really far ahead, you can consider leveling Verdant Growth first because that gives you more damage in comparison and some more protection reduction if the seeds get destroyed with some cooldown reduction on top of that. So this is an option in some situations though it really depends on your playstyle and I think you have to be quite ahead in order to justify that. After that, your next point should definitely go into the ultimate because you want to have that set up, that CC. Now the next priority is Wisps once again, you want to level that up as long as you can and then when you can't invest a point into it anymore, you should go for Verdant Growth. You could level up Wrath of Terra and I do that sometimes because it gives you a little bit of nice extra damage, but generally I would not recommend it. The extra damage that you get out of Wrath of Terra is not that much. It is 50 per rank and this is also reduced by any form of protection. So really you're not looking for that as a support. Most of the time the benefits from Wisps and Verdant Growth outweigh that. So you should prioritize Wisps then Verdant Growth and then it's once again down to your choosing. You could now max out Wrath of Terra if you want to have some extra damage as well for aggression, but you can also max out Nature's Grasp first and completely ignore Wrath of Terra in order to get more cooldown reduction on Nature's Grasp and set up your team better that way, whereas your team will have to carry the burden of dealing a bit more damage themselves. For less experienced Sylvanas players, I would generally recommend Wrath of Terra first, this is why I put it this way in the guide, simply because you're not gonna hit that many Nature's Grasps yet and the extra damage may benefit your team more than an additional missed pull. Because as long as you don't hit Nature's Grasp, it's really not that useful. When it comes to building Sylvanas, I will as always refer to my support build guide first, check that out, that gives you a lot more detailed information on this. But if you're looking for a very plain basic build that works in most situations, I'm going to throw you one here just in case. So what you want to go for is usually Watcher's Gift, 
You want to start with Lono's Mask in most situations because there's not too much of a reason not to. You want to get Traveler's Shoes on Sylvanas here because you want that extra mobility, uh, you want that extra gold, and it just is overall very beneficial for him. Obviously, sometimes you need something like Reinforced Shoes because you otherwise don't get enough protections up, but usually due to his built-in uh, protections in his heal, you can get away with Traveler's Shoes. After that, I would usually recommend Mark of the Vanguard simply because it is such a valuable defensive item. At this point, you will have a lot of starter items, but that's actually pretty okay. The next item should be Gauntlet of Thieves because it's just way too strong at the moment. Then you should choose between Sovereignty and Hardwood Amulet, depending on the situation, depending on what kind of enemies you're against. And that's the moment afterwards where you can actually consider those more niche items that are good for healing supports. Obviously, you can still build the other one of Hardwood and Sovereignty if you haven't built them yet, and if there's a lot of healing, you should be building a Pestilence. But if neither of those things apply, then you can look into Rod of Asclepius or Lotus Crown. The point here is, and the question that many people ask is why not build this earlier? Really, it's because Aura is also strong at the moment and they provide you with a lot more, whereas the items also have more defenses, more effective health and just overall give you more. With Rod of Asclepius, the benefit at this point is that you already have a lot of protections, so the health will add nicely to that and will synergize with each other. And this is the point where the healing increase really does something because the healing has high values already. The extra power does a little bit for you and the movement speed is very beneficial if you get focused out and you can get away a little better and you can rotate better into team fights. Lotus Crown on the other hand I would rarely recommend. It does not do anything for your healing and the passive is just a little bit outdated I would call it. It gives you 20 physical and magic protections for 5 seconds for everyone you heal. But Gauntlet of Thieves gives you the same thing constantly without you having to heal for it first, having to use mana, having to look at cooldowns, because it's always there. So really, it's just a weaker version of it. Even the other stats are not that amazing. That little bit of extra power is not gonna impact your healing a lot, especially as compared to Rod of Asclepius. 60 physical protection is nice, but then again, it's only physical protection, it doesn't do anything against magicals. And MP5 should not be needed at this point of the game anymore. So... You can build it sometimes if you just need a heavy bunch of auras and then maybe it's justifiable, but generally I would probably avoid it. After that, things become super situational. You can consider something like Spirit Rope, you can maybe consider something like Mental of Discord, you can consider Emperor's Armor now, we'll talk about that very soon. So there are quite a few options for those last thoughts. They really depend on the game and what you're up against and whatnot, so I don't really want to give any general advice on which one you should buy in most situations, because there is no most situations here anymore. It is the point where you should just counter build whatever the enemy has. Don't look for too much power or pen. That's not that beneficial in most situations unless you're really ahead. You rather want to look for more supporty items. While I already went over a lot of tips and tricks when we were talking about the abilities, some things are worth pointing out in addition to that. One, you can place wards as bait. If you think the enemy will clear out wards at certain positions pretty quickly, you can place a ward there when the enemy comes close and then move somewhere unseen from that position and you can pull them in while they try to take down the ward. It's a pretty unexpected effective bait, shoutouts to Polar Bear Mike for bringing this up. And while it's a cheesy strat, it will work more often than you think. Two, don't be afraid to use your pull. Obviously your pull works better in combination with your one and that's easier, but sometimes your one will be down, you can't really use it, and you just let that pull go to waste instead of just trying for it. You're gonna miss a lot of pulls and your teammates may be like, oh, you missed so many pulls, but it doesn't really matter. At least you try to get the pull out. It's better to miss a pull than not to pull an enemy at all in the first place. Three, be very aware of when to use your ultimate. Different from a Hunbats who can basically set himself up with the ultimate, you're very much team reliant on what happens after you use your ultimate. You want your teammates to be close enough, you want your teammates to have their abilities up in order to follow up on that ultimate. It's not wrong to use the ultimate on a single target to kill them either. You just have to make sure that somebody can actually kill the target. Don't wait until you have three enemies around you and you can go for that big ultimate when there's an opportunity to safely kill one player beforehand, before the fight even gets to that point. Also, depending on which ADC you're with, try to abuse Sylvanas' strong laning phase. He doesn't necessarily have the best laning phase out of all supports anymore, but he still has a very very strong laning potential with a lot of aggression that he has going for him and you should make use of that. Last but not least, no Sylvanas limitations. While he has all this aggression, while he has all this strong potential, the strong setup and everything, you should be aware 
that he can easily be singled out. If you fall behind too much with Sylvanas and you're walking up lanes on your own, and I see this quite often, just people like trying to ward on their own and then just getting caught out by enemies or just going up to a tower for no reason. You are very, very much dependent on your team around you because you have no mobility in your kit that will get you out of anything. And you have to be aware of this and people keep making this mistake with Silvano so much where they just get caught out on their own. Very, very important point to me. I like to stress this over and over. Be very aware of your positioning. Have the wards up so you know where you can go and stay with your team in most cases. Before we close this off, some words on relics. The one that you would look for the most is Blink Rune, not necessarily always as the first item, but it just sets you up so well with your ultimate, and Sylvanas kind of needs it. Aside of that, Magic Shell is a great item in general, just to give your team some more protections. It kind of replaces Meditation Cloak now that it's not that strong anymore, and Sylvanas never really needed Meditation as much as others do in the first place because of his build and heal. Another item that I think is very potent now is Belt of Frenzy, very great for objective clear and also good for team fights. Heavenly Wings is a bit more justifiable on Sylvanas than on others. It's usually not that strong, but Sylvanas can suffer a lot from getting slowed. And if you don't have Wing Blade, this is some option that can help at least a little bit. Depends on the situation and the enemy team comp, though. Horrific Emblem and Cursed Ankh can both be considered in certain situations where you require either attack speed slow or anti-heal or some slows on the enemies. And Phantom Veil is more of a niche item. The problem with this item is that the cooldown is just too long. What is used on some occasions is a Sundering Spear, not completely bad on support anymore either, though I feel like Sylvanas is not exactly the best character to have it, and obviously there are Thorns as well, which can be considered. With that, thank you guys for watching, I hope this was insightful, I hope this was informative. If you're not subscribed yet, feel free to click that sub button and maybe the bell, it really helps me out. I would say see you for the next one tomorrow, but I'm not quite sure, I'm trying to get out another video today, I can't promise, but I'm working on it, hopefully that will happen. Duke Sloth! Out.